Good morning. All right. Come on, find a seat. Welcome to our worship service on this December 6, 2020. And uh, somebody knows today is St. Nicholas Day, so I have a question for you. Where's my candy? <laughs> so when I grew up, uh, December 6 was always uh, a little teaser toward Christmas. It uh, was based on St. Nicholas, who was a very char charitable bishop in the very ancient times. And uh, it was the tradition that children would polish their shoes in the evening of December 6. Yes, I still grew up with having to polish my shoes. And we would put them in front of our bedroom doors, and then hopefully if we were good on Sunday, on the six, the morning of the 6th, we would find goodies in there, like a little candy and maybe a game or things, things like that. So a little teaser for the Christmas season. Uh, so this is, I always love it. Um, but, you know, my spouse hasn't caught on yet, so I'm, I'm not getting any goodies anymore on December 6th. But welcome. Today is the second of Advent, and a little later we will uh, light the candle, the second candle of our Advent wreath, the candle of peace. But before we enter into our worship service, there are a few announcements I would like to make. That uh, So today... After church, from about 11 to 12, you can still browse. If you haven't browsed uh, the bazaar goodies yet, we have kept a number of them uh, sitting out in parish hall. So I think my microphone went just out. Yeah. I think the battery is... If anyone, I don't know if we can find any battery. Right. Oh, yes. So I be careful. Uh, so a few announcements. Um, uh, Wendy Salisbury sent me an email asking that anyone who has still gifts to bring in from our list for the um, families uh, who are receiving Christmas presents through the Friends of the Homeless of the South Shore, uh, they are due ASAP, so if you still have them outstanding, please drop them off at the church. Next Sunday, we are having two worship services, one at 10 a.m., our regular service, and then you are invited at 3 p.m. or for those who would like to come for a service of comfort and peace, which I know as uh, a blue Christmas service, actually. So if you, uh, you know, want to approach the season a little quieter, you also have some heartaches that you carry with you through this season. This is a service that uh, acknowledges that. Not everything is joy to the world in this time for everyone, but there are people who are grieving, who are mourning, who are dealing with issues. And this is a service to lift them up. On Monday, uh, December 14th, we are holding Sue Condon's funeral service here at our church. It is at 1 p.m., not as originally announced on Saturday. So it's going to be on Monday. Um, but we need to keep the same rules, so 25 people may gather in the sanctuary, and most of them will be family. So there will be, fellowship hall will be set up so you can watch the service live, 
I have also heard from some people that they are just going to sit in the parking lot and watch it there, because if you want to just lay eyes on Jack and his family,、um, I would suggest we can do that after the service here as we get ready for the funeral. But everything will be outside, okay? So there's no congregating within the church. Uh, due to being very cautious about the virus,、um, are there other announcements? So I wanted to say I know that yesterday we held our bazaar, and、uh, it was it was good. Yes, Kathy, I see you. You'll get um, so um, it was a. Good event. We even in this mess outside. I think we sold what ten trees yesterday, and two wreaths. I mean, it was a messy day. So Kathy has an announcement, and then if anyone else has an announcement, speak up. Look at that! Almost everybody. All right, awesome people. I would say so. Yes. Yes. All right. Great news. So thank you, everyone, for working so hard, keeping the rules about social distancing and wearing masks and being careful. So thank you. Friends, let us begin our worship service with our call to worship. In this season of prophecy, promise, and preparation, we come to be renewed and refreshed. We come to be inspired by the stories of a Messiah who will change the world, who will change us. We come to listen for words of hope and joy, promise and challenge. We come with open ears, open minds, and open hearts. We come to receive the blessings God has in store for us in this season of waiting. So come, let us worship our God, the One who brings all things to fulfillment. Our first hymn is, and we are listening. Isaiah the prophet has written of old.
Today we light our second candle of our Advent wreath, the candle of peace. The poet Wendell Berry wrote, when despair for the world grows in me, I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still waters. And this reminds us of Psalm 23. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. When everything feels hopeless, when we feel that the world has gone mad and is falling apart, God calls us to a vision that is, I think, beyond our imagination. God calls us to breathe in the holy breath of peace. When we light the candle of peace, we breathe in the one who restores us and the world we live in. For God promises whatever we face in life, God's spirit of peace dwells within us. Be with me in the spirit of prayer. Faithful God, we need to trust that you are at work to restore all of creation in its intended harmony. Give us your shalom, that we may be reconciled to all enemies in the peace that passes all understanding through Christ Jesus our Lord. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness, come and bring us peace. Amen. Our scripture reading for the second Sunday in Advent is taken from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of our Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with a lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand into the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my, of my holy mountain, 
For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Here ends this morning's scripture reading. And shall God add God's blessing in our hearing and understanding of God's holy word. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, we continue our preaching series from the book of Isaiah. And today's passage, I believe, is well known. It is typically called the peaceable kingdom. And I think listening to the passage, I don't know if you hear that too and feel that too, the painting by Edward Hicks might come to mind, which actually hangs in the Worcester Art Museum. We read of a wolf lying with a lamb, a calf, a leopard, and a fatling together, a child playing near the home of a snake, all without harm, all without fear. Now these obvious mismatches are meant to catch our attention and tune us in to the fact that something different and something unique is going on in this vision of Isaiah's. All right, so I grew up with cats and dogs, and they usually get, got along pretty well, but there were the occasional hisses and fights and things like that. Once we hosted an Irish setter for an overnight, and if that thing would have gone loose in our chicken coop, there would have been nothing left. So I'm not quite sure. We have heard and seen some unusual animal friendships that normally should not be friends, right? Like Cassie the cheetah and Minty the Labrador who grew up together at Bush Gardens or Amur the tiger and Timur the goat in a Siberian zoo, which are inseparable. Cute, but experts say that there is still an 80 to 85% chance that Timur the goat might get eaten by his best friend, Amur. Isaiah shares indeed that a catchy yet impossible vision of peace. A wolf and a lamb? No, no, one is dinner. A calf and a leopard? A child and a snake? Living together in harmony? And, as it said, they will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, God declares through the prophet Isaiah, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So yes, the passage shows a new world, a new age, where things that usually cause fear in people are changed into things that we no longer need to fear. Everything is turned around, and no one needs to fear for their safety, for they are protected by God. This is how it will be in the peaceable kingdom, in God's kingdom. Tis the season, right, when we hear the word peace a lot, especially in church, yes, so I admit that. We are getting ready for the birth of the one called the Prince of Peace. When the angel heralds sing of Christ's birth, they sing of peace for all the earth. Our Christmas cards contain messages of peace. Our carols talk about bringing peace on earth. But in truth, sometimes it seems this dream of peace is just that, a dream. Too idealistic, too unrealistic to be worthy of our serious consideration. It is hard to believe that peace will ever come to our earth, isn't it? 
Now, I did a little research, and the world's track record for peace is dismal. The Workforce Magazine personal personnel journal put together this incredible yet depressing statistic. Since the beginning of recorded history, the entire world has seen has been at peace less than 8% of the time. Now, in this study, the periodical discovered that of the 3,541 years of recorded history, only 286 years saw peace. In that time, in these over 3,000 years, over 8,000 peace treaties were made and broken. At this very moment in time, the world experiences 40 active conflicts. Right now, at this point in time, 160,000 U.S. soldiers, men and women, are deployed around the world, and many of them in harm's way. You know, and especially, I think, after September 11, our world has changed significantly. Since that day, I think now we worry for our own safety. Every time we travel, take public transportation, or gather at special events with many other people. Right now, we can't do that. But, you know, I have thought about it, going to a concert at Patriot Place with how many thousands of people. As a country right now, we face all kinds of unrest and divisions between states and towns and neighborhoods and parties after a contentious presidential election. I mean, we have heard rumors, you know, if things go crazy again, civil war. There is that danger. And then what about our own families? within the walls of our own homes. In September, the New England Journal of Medicine reports of a pandemic within a pandemic. Intimate partner violence, which is a new term for domestic violence, has increased significantly due to the stay-at-home orders and reduced access to support and helplines. And what about the peace or the lack thereof within the confines of our own minds? I would say that any PCP would tell you that people's anxiety has risen. When I had my checkup, my PCP asked me, are you depressed? How is it going? There's worry. There's worry that a rise in depression right now as the virus rages on and we get cooped up, maybe, again, in our houses during this darkest time of year. So what about that piece? Is it possible or will it remain a vision, a vision impossible? All we know is that we want peace, that we need peace within us, in our homes, in our community, our nation, our world. But how? How in the world can peace come? Left to our own devices, peace, yes, may remain a vision or wishful thinking. But Isaiah offers us a vision that could actually lead to peace. In a reflection by Kate Huey, she notes that, and I quote, the prophet Isaiah speaks to the people of Israel when their political situation is in disarray. In parentheses, not much has happened, not, not much has changed. Just when things appear hopeless and the future looks bleak, the prophet promises that God will send a leader who will rule with justice toward all and mercy toward the most vulnerable in society. 
the little ones, the defenseless ones, the innocent ones will be protected and cared for. Isaiah urges the people to remember that they are, as the people of God, that remember who they are as people of God and reminding them that their power, their life, comes from goodness, not greed. The promises are astounding, she continues, and perhaps unbelievable. The order of nature that we all have learned about in school, the violence of predators that we accept as natural, will be overturned. The rules of life will be changed, bent in the direction of gentleness and peace, not just any peace, but shalom, which is a much more deeper and much more sacred sense of peace. We read this beautiful text in the season of Advent and we hear it with our minds on Jesus as the one promised and longed for, the one who was full of power and yet brought peace, one who was humble even so. We read it in Advent to connect the promises of God with the reality of Jesus. You know, and I can see how Jesus lived into Isaiah's vision of a leader who brought God's shalom to the world. Not just a deep peace, but a peace with justice. He came humbly into this world and he remained humble. He taught on a mountainside that the peacemakers will be blessed. And then he fed thousands. He spent most of his ministry and time healing, not just the sick, but the many who had no standing or place within society and religion by including them, by giving them dignity, by respecting them, by loving them. He had a knack for collecting the misfits and the outcasts and sharing a meal with them. He never said anything derogative about the soldiers that arrested and executed him, but he prayed for them. For Isaiah, the Messiah would bring peace with justice, a justice that would bring grace to people who have been shut out, unwanted, unloved. Peace with justice. That is how we're going to get to peace for the world and a vision of peace that I believe Jesus fulfilled. So friends, as we wait for the Prince of Peace this Advent season, we can help to usher in the Christ child by working for peace in our world in the meantime. Now I think while this whole concept of world peace might be an impossible dream to us, Isaiah has shown us how to start it. We work for peace by working for justice. We work for peace by seeking out the best for the poor, the needy, the meek, the ones who have been overlooked and unloved. And I'm sure that you know this, and I know this, that in this holiday season we cannot pretend we do not know of the needs of others. Everywhere we look, we can find people in need, causes to support, charities to donate to, organizations who are trying desperately to meet the needs of adults and children's, children and families who just can't make it through this cold winter season without a community pulling together. And we do well to greet these reminders of those who have less with generosity, not with the annoyance that so often replaces generosity. The, but the Prince of Peace demands of us even more than that. Peace with justice takes more than charity. We read, he shall not judge by what his eyes sees or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge. See, peace demands 
that we work hard to create a world where those who are on the outside of our circles can feel welcomed inside. Justice demands that we find out why some people, even in our town, live with food insecurity when we have more than enough. Peace demands that we cross the boundaries of race and class that typically keep God's children separated from each other. Justice demands that we just don't just shrug our shoulders and forget to work for change. The root of Jesse, the one we know as Jesus, is standing as a signal to all peoples. The question is, will we listen? Will we learn? Will we work for justice? Will we work for peace? What kind of world do we want to live in? And what are we doing to help usher in this new reality, the reality of God's kingdom coming to earth? Amen. As we enter our time of prayer, I want to just ask your prayers for Pat Walker Saludi, who is at Good Samaritan Hospital, has been there for a while. Uh, she went to the hospital about four weeks ago, went to rehab, and went back to the hospital. Um, in addition to all of her other health issues, she tested positive for COVID. So it's even more complicated for her at this point. So keep her in your prayers. Also, uh, we mourn the loss of Helen Hogan, uh, who was at, in the hospital, uh, knowing that she also had some health issues, but it was also uh, 
by COVID that Helen passed away beginning of this past week. Um, people have asked me what, what our services. They're going to do a private burial. And um, when we come out of this pandemic, we're going to celebrate Helen's life. I talked with her daughter. And again, keep in your hearts and prayers Jack Condon as he mourns the loss of his wife, Sue. Uh, take a look at our list in the back uh, and keep praying for the people that, in, that are in your hearts. Let us pray. This morning, O oh God, we pray for the spirit of wisdom, that it may rest upon us, a spirit of understanding and knowledge. O oh God, grant us that we live in harmony and may your mercy prevail. Oh God, we pray for steadfastness to gird our spirits that peace may prevail in our world. Like in this vision of Isaiah as lamb lives with a wolf, grant that we live in harmony and help us all to work for peace with justice in this world. And yes, O oh God, we hear all those voices crying out in the wilderness, women living in fear, children hiding, the elderly feeling left alone and neglected. Gracious God, help us to be the peace for them. Help us to find ways to be in touch with one another, to care for one another, so that these feelings of isolation are not as strong. And we pray for all those who live in harm's way, for our service members around the world, for our first responders, for our policemen, our firemen, our emergency personnel. Help us to support them for us through us being careful and supporting them in their everyday hard work. Gracious God, we come before you knowing that you are the giver of hope, that you are the giver of joy and peace to fill all our hearts and to be the one that shows us the way how to live together in peace with justice and love for all people. This we pray in the one who is to come and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
as we prepare for our communion service, everyone have a communion packet? Margaret, did you get one? Okay. Could we get one more communion packet for Margaret, please? And I did forget, did Jessica's surgery happen or did it get delayed? Okay. Tuesday. So we're praying for your mom and your daughter for back surgery is happening on Tuesday. So let us begin our communion celebration with for listening to one verse of Come O Come Emmanuel. As we come to this table, we are reminded that this is the table of Jesus Christ and a banquet prepared for everyone. All who seek to be nourished and sustained in this journey of faith, all who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice, everyone is welcome here. Let us pray. Blessed are you, breath of peace, giver of our life, source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Throughout the ages, your song of liberation has impregnated us with your hope for a world where those considered last and least are first and most. Violence is overcome by the power of your ancient love and All siblings work together for peace. O God, you bring our longings to birth and send prophets to awaken us to your approaching advent among us. We thank you for those who, like Mary, have the strength and courage to give birth to your love in the world. For those who, like the shepherds, dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem for those who, like the wise ones, actively challenge violent and oppressive powers. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown to us in the womb and tomb, in the cradle and the cross, in tenderness and compassion. And at this time, we also remember with all whom you would have us share your feast. And so we pray again for all those who are in sorrow or in pain, all those who are ill or alone, all who are close to our hearts, our sisters who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, and whose lives have been blighted by violence and racism and poverty, for all whom the world counts as least and last, for our brothers who struggle hard each and every day, for loving families, for extended families that support each other, for the world we live in. We pray for the church and for its many ministries, for nations as they strive for peace and justice and for an end to violence everywhere. God of hope, 
Make this bread the means of our rebuilding, the cup a medium of our transformation, this table the foundation of our renewal, and this community a place of our rebirth. And so we remember, we remember Jesus on that last evening with his disciples. He took a loaf of bread, he gave you things, he broke it, and he said, take and eat whenever you do this, remember me. And in the same way, after supper, he raised the cup, he blessed it, he passed it around, and he said, Drink from this cup, all of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ and the bread of life. And this is the cup of Christ's blood, which is life-giving to all of creation. So let us share in these in these elements of bread and cup. The body of Christ broken for you and the cup of salvation shed for you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for breaking into our world and pouring into our lives and our experiences. We thank you, God, for this meal of thanksgiving and for the stories that will emerge in this Christmas season of love, of grace, and of hope. Amen. So friends, as we leave this place and scatter back out into the world, may the God of hope who loves us fill us with all joy and peace today and throughout the coming week so that in believing we may abound in hope through the love of Jesus Christ 
in the power of the Holy Spirit. So friends, go in peace. Amen.